I'm good at hiding.
Did Big Brother teach you too? Yes, he did eat. Oh, my was a very good teacher. I know he was. I want to grow up to be just like him. You know, Omar was really good at math. Really? Yep. He even taught mommy sometimes. Okay. Let's start by counting one to five. One, two, three. Maya? Yes, Steve? Can we do math tomorrow, too? Again? Sure. Good, because I like it better. Ten months now, we've been here. Safe for now, but we'll have to move soon. They think we're dead. Their raid three years ago saw to the burning of our village. Forty were killed and more than half as many were kidnapped. Among them, my eldest son. Omar. Oh, oh, they came quickly to the army, looting and raping and burning. They took the sturdiest of the boys as their recruits and the females as the receptacles of their rage and lust. Those who were kidnapped were killed, but not before their vaginas were impaled by bayonets. And even then, they carried on till each one of them finished, the whole gang of them. They made it a point. When they were done, they watched their comrades do the dirty work. Some dead, some alive, it, it didn't matter. It's a soldier's duty to be thorough. Oh, there was so much blood everywhere. Their pants were soaked through with the blood of my friends, my cousins, my godchildren. They looked black in the firelight, like God-forsaken ink blots of carnage. I can still hear the screaming of the semi-automatics. Something's hitting me now and tugging. I hear yelling from children. I look down to see flailing arms. It's Maya. I had been holding her so close to my side, I was suffocating her. Two pulls hard on my shirt. I, I shield their eyes. What's that sound? I force voice through a choked throat. Don't you dare look anywhere but at me! You hear me? Look at me! Is that my voice? They just stand there, listlessly. Too shocked to cry, too terrified to speak. They just stand there in this theater of despair. And soon I hear it, this incredibly loud bang right next to me. And I feel it, like the earth itself was heaving. This is not the time to throw a tantrum. Stop it, I said. Stop banging on the wall and sit still. The loud noise continues. I slap my up firmly. Two gets one, two. Stop it, I said. Stop stopping. I'm shaking now. Am I hysterical? Like statues rooted in place for centuries, they don't move. They're motionless, but the heart thumping continues even louder now. Oh, my mind is in a frenzy. If this doesn't stop, they're going to find us. We move to another corner and crouch. Surely they won't find us here. The noise is still there, so close to us, and my chest, it feels like it's going to explode. That's when I realized 
It's my heart. It was all I heard. Each beat pounding louder than gunshots. I was certain it would only be a matter of time before we were caught. Before we join our sisters on center stage. We couldn't go. We had to wait. For my husband, he had the boys. He knew the escape route. Where, where was he? Some men, they stayed and fought. They brought pistols and machetes. Some threw rocks and handmade spears. My husband, he knew better. The soldiers, they would just laugh. Cackling in tune with the crackling of the fire. Nothing seemed like it mattered, but it did. This was our home. It meant too much to see it become their playground, their slaughterhouse. Mom, my husband comes. But he carries only he. We exchange only glances. His eyes tell me that he and Omar had separated. <laughs> he puts a finger to his lips. Everyone, be quiet. There's just more yelling and more screaming and more bodies collapsing to the earth. Stayed, but Maya, he, a newborn too, said otherwise. We had to go. The rear of our hut led directly to a small woodland passage. Mung led us, we all held hands. No one gets left behind. We were tired, and my thighs were burning from being crouched for so long. And then suddenly we, we stopped. Mom's frozen. Have we been seen? I gather the children, I shield their eyes. I'm ready. But Mom is still transfixed. I follow his eyes to a group of soldiers suppressing some villagers, children. Omar! I saw them take Omar. We both did. One thing was 
certain. As a man, there was nothing he could do to wrestle his son from the arms of those soldiers. But as a father, there was everything he could do to keep his family from sharing the same fate. We had to go. He had already lingered there too long. Mom never said anything, but he didn't have to. A few angry tears spoke clearly on his behalf. Losing Omar changed him forever. And I lost them both that night, Mom and Omar. We all did. don't remember much beyond that. Mung led us through the thickest area of the jungle, a path he had prepared and practiced with Omar. We were not found or followed. The soldiers, they were well they didn't know the land like we did. We survived. We lost everything. Our home, our lives, our Omar. Everything. Mommy, mommy! Look at me, look what I can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> Great job. Me too, mommy. Oh, Look. you? Ten, 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 ten. <laughs> you make mommy so proud. Okay, it's getting late. Time to pray.
weeks of roaming the hills, we met up with other survivors and established a small community not more than five miles away from Miha Some have come back to rebuild, daily to rebuild. Settling here, working there. But we have to move. There's no telling when the army will be back.
You know, when you think about it, there are really four things a Karen does when he's about to die, when he's looking into the barrel of a gun. You want to know the first? He denies it. He kicks and he flails and spits. Bitch. <laughs> Hilarious. As if his life is worth something, as if his life meant something, it had some value. You know what I do? You listen to me, you fucking monkey! I caught my piece. Click, clap. <laughs> now, the second thing a Karen does when he's about to die, he lies. He says, I don't live here. He says, my family is gone. He says, I don't know anything. I'm just a passerby. Blah, blah, blah. Tough, tough, tough. Better yet, he doesn't say a word. So we tortured him. Right, Major? <laughs> but not for info. Not for fun. He waters the ground with piss and his tears. Only crop that's good for is more dead bodies. And I'm a fucking farmer. And this, this is how I harvest my land. You want to know the third thing that Karen does? When he's about to die, listen up. And this is where you shit crawlers always fuck up. He tells me where his family lives and where they're hiding. But not with his words, with his eyes. You shitheads always look to the same place. To the direction of your hut or the path of the escape route you map with your family. You think I ever have to ask? Where's your family? Fuck no. Never. So predictable. Such fucking idiots. So we go and get them. We bring them back, we line them up real nice. We, we have a little uh, uh, family reunion. Family reunion, that's right. Now, you want to know the last thing that Karen does when he's about to die? He begs, he weeps, he squeals, and he prays. Oh, you pray every time. Whoever this fucking God is that you pray to, either he's an asshole, or you maggot to stupid as shit, because he never listens. You know what I do next? I take my piece, and let me tell you by now, it's just itching to blast. And I shoot the woman to his left and the child to his right. You know why? Because some family trees have too many branches. And I'm a fucking lumberjack. Chop, chop. <laughs> Sometimes, depending on the look in his eyes, kind of like the look you got on right now, that, but mostly how I'm feeling at the moment, I might have some fun with his wife and precious little girl. Delicious. I call in the boys. You know, you would be surprised at how easily almost anything can slip in and slip out with just a little application of fresh Karen blood. And I say, look, look how much we appreciate your family. You see, we put them to good use. You know why? Because I'm a fucking humanitarian. And they say we don't care, huh? Now, you want to be my next donation, monkey boy? What? Easy, man. Omar, sit. Listen, bro. <laughs> Soldiers, uh, this one has proven to be an exception. He fights like a uh, passionate Burmese militant. 
That's why he fights with us, strong ones. End this fury now. Save it for tomorrow. Get geared, prepare to mobilize. Move tonight. Sir! Major understands. He's supported me ever since they sent me to his leadership. I'm an exception. I'm here to fight, to kill, and become powerful. I'm tired of being called the weak one. I'm tired of representing a race of weak, vulnerable victims. I'm not a victim. Not anymore. Never again. I'm a soldier. I don't run and hide in hills and valleys and seek or seek handouts from foreigners. Pathetic. I take care of myself and my country. I don't remember the details of when I was recruited. It was all too overwhelming. I remember one thing though, the fear. I remember my body trembling. I remember the feeling of my breath being ripped off my throat as I tried to run from these men who stood over me, tall, remarkably powerful and strong. This isn't happening. I remember calling for my father but he never came. No one came. My legs are like jelly. Who knows how many steps I took before I was snatched. With one arm, a soldier took me, threw me, like a bundle of bamboo. Everywhere is fire and blood, headless bodies. But I make my step. I don't run again. No. I punch. I kick. Like bamboo leaves against grey night, the soldiers just laugh. There's a soldier standing there, but he's not laughing like the others. He just stares at me. His eyes flaring with hate. After a while, he steps forward. His rifle held firmly in both hands. That was the last time I saw him smile. Next thing I remember is black, nothing. I was gone from my home, gone from existence itself. I don't even remember who I was. I don't want to, and I don't try. I was scared. But when they took me to be one of them, I couldn't help but admire their strength. Why did I run when all I had to do was fight for them? Be on the strong side, be on the side in charge, be safe, have control, have the power. They had the confidence. There was nothing for them to fear. Karen people hide in fear. And I was tired of hiding in fear. I refused to think of myself as Karen. I'm a Burmese soldier, one of the strongest sects of the strongest militia. 
I grew myself. I have, but I grew myself even more. They call me scared, but fear no longer exists for me. They may mock, but I'm a true natural fighter, a warrior. They'll see. She suffers so much already. So much for all of us. It was terrible. I left to get rice from a field about 12 miles west. It was where many Karen went to get their food. It was a secret from the army. We met to discuss how to tend to it. We had to keep it a secret, so we decided to only work it at night when the army couldn't sleep. We also had to work in teams. So one week a month, I, along with three others, would go and do our share. This time, though, it was different. The Burma Army and the Kareni National Solidarity Organization, a group loyal to the Burma Army, had been waiting. They had already killed one of my friends. Cut off his head. They 
impaled it and stuck it in the middle of the field to warn us, to mock us. It did nothing. Our families needed to eat. Getting that rice was vital. We had to press on. But it wasn't long before they got us. At that time, they captured me and three others, as well as four others from other villages. We were tied up, beaten, punched, given electrical shocks to our body. We were beat with rifle butts, and one man used his pistol to beat us. One man's jaw was broken. One man's skull was broken, and for me, I was not able to endure the torture. Then one of us was forced to go with them. And my friend King Gui was killed. I may have been killed just as he was, but I managed to escape with just this broken rib. And not before I stabbed this soldier in the shoulder with Hrong's blade, which I found lying on the interrogation table. I could feel it. I twisted the blade and pulled it out. I've been feeling that for months. The army accused us of being in the resistance, but we were not. They said informers had given them this information. We are just farmers. It's true that my friend who was killed used to be a resistance soldier. But he was retired. He had to tend his farm to take care of his sick mother and child. I'm just a farmer. A farmer and a father. I raise crops and children. I heard that the army was moving west of the field, exactly opposite Niha Shun. They casualed about the raid, about how thorough its annihilation was. They didn't know we were rebuilding. We were safe. We managed to only get a half a sack full of rice, a week and a half worth of food. Soon I will have to find a new farm. Maybe Ted's right. Soon there won't be a farm. Our, resource, our resources are dwindling fast. We wouldn't be running out of fear, but out of necessity. Maybe we do need to move. If we want to survive. I'm okay, Ted. I just fell against the stone. I'll heal. Mom, I know you don't want to go. But this hut, it's just a hut. And this village is just a village like so many others. Our home is here. It's us. Wherever we go is home as long as we're together. You're right, Ted. There's a refugee camp to the northeast of here in Meira on the Thai border. We'll start heading there at nightfall. Oh, Mom! But shouldn't you heal first? Tonight's good. Do we have any water left? Only half a day's worth. I was going to send Maya today. Okay, she and I will go today and gather some for the journey. That rice should be able to get us to the Thai border. Maya, ye, two. Come on, we're going to get some water. You and me, together? Yep. <gasps> okay, Dad. But Dad, you just got home. <laughs> I know, but you'll be thanking me as soon as you get thirsty. Oh, uh, can I help? I need you to stay, young warrior, and protect your mother and two. Like big brother? No, not quite. Huh? 
What do you mean? Sometimes you, you can't do anything but protect yourself, no matter what you do or how hard you try. Sometimes really bad things happen and there's nothing you can do about it except take care of yourself. Sometimes you have to be patient. You can't just rush into something because you feel you have to. Sometimes it's more important to wait so that later you can do something more, something better. You understand? I think so. Good boy. You can count on me, Dad. I know I can. Pat, once you've packed, you should go ahead. We'll catch up. No. When we go together, together we're home. I love you. I love you, too. Okay, Maya. Let's go. so much, so mature. It's hard to imagine you're only nine years old. It's you and Mom. You make me strong like this. It makes me happy that I can help you. How's he? He's good. We practice hiding like you showed us every day. He's okay. He's so impatient. I think it's because he's afraid of being alone. Well, that's something we can get comfortable with over time. Yeah. Does he know why yet? No, not really. He just doesn't understand. He listens. He's a good boy. <laughs> you know Omar. <laughs> he questioned everything. He was so fierce for someone so young. He listened to me when he wanted to, but your mother? He wouldn't dare cross her. Because mom's so strong. Strongest of all. You know Omar. Always looking for a fight. You know by seven? Mm -hmm. He fought every boy in the village. Did you know that? <laughs> they called him the fearless fight. Because he would do anything. I know because all the older girls talked about him. And all the older boys, well, they either hated him or wanted to be him. <laughs> Most times, both. He was something else. Yeah. Not a day goes by where I don't pray for him. What's wrong, Maya? It's you and Mom. Sometimes I feel like you talk to God more than you talk to me. Maya, that's not fair. You know how important prayer is. It's not that. Dad, it's Omar. You never talk about it. Well, you saw. Mom either. We don't talk about it because we can't talk about it. Losing my son to the senseless wrath of, of man and not of God is something I have never forgiven myself for. I wish I hadn't seen it. I wish they had just shot him dead. At least then I'd know. Then we'd all know where Omar was with God in heaven. But he wasn't shot, he wasn't killed. He could be out there somewhere. Anywhere. So I pray, because there is hope. There is a chance that one day I could hold my son in my arms again. Tell him how proud I am of him. Tell him how much I love him. Tell him how sorry I am for failing him. Tell him how I wish it was me they had captured and tortured and not him. This conflict is so senseless, I don't see how it will ever end. Ted's right to move. What good is it to be loyal to a village, 
not even recognized by your own country. It wasn't invaders, or foreigners, or mercenaries. It was my countrymen who took my son and burned my village. I just watched them do it. Maya could never understand. I sacrificed my pride, my honor, my fatherhood, so that we could walk like this today, so that we could be a family, even without Omar. Sometimes doing nothing means doing the most. I have to believe that. I have to. Or this sacrifice would have been worthless. Maybe one day, Maya, one day when you're older, we'll talk about it. Promise? I promise. Maybe with Omar, too. Come on. Okay, here we are. No. Wait. Something's not right. My, you've learned to be cautious. Dad, I like it. Please. No. Something doesn't feel right. Maya, I know you. No. Dad, wait. Please, just let please let's just go back. The, the next well is five miles away. I'll go, and you can go back. You can go home. I know that you're hurt. I know you won't say. Dad, please, please, please. Maya. Here, wait here. I'll get closer and check it out. You have nothing to worry about. I won't call for you unless it's good. Do you trust me? Of course I trust you, Dad. It's not you I'm worried about, it's this. Everything. Something is not right. Dad, Here. of course. Hold this. Wait for my signal.
turn, Phil. How long has it been since the last attack? They're huffed there, they don't look touched. It looks like they rebuilt like most of the village. Just like I said, stupid. Ravaged once and they beg for more. They dare fight us? So we pick up with the rest left off. We'll sweep in from the left. Burn remaining huts. You don't leave this place until it's completely annihilated. Do you understand, sir? Omar! Sir, stay in the perimeter. Check the runners. Everyone, remember, we keep the boys. Everyone else dies tonight. The first woman is mine. The rest are yours. Just remember, when you're finished, make sure they're dead. Sir!
can't do anything but protect yourself, no matter what you do or how hard you try. myself. I never meant for this to happen. I never dreamed this would be the fate of my family. I'm strong. I have power. They were weak, cowards, jungle crawlers. If I was here, I would have run, just like father did. No, I'm Burma Army now. Soon, I'll be rewarded for my performance here, for my courage. Let no one ever doubt me again. Just a kid. 
sure is. Get! Get out of here! Go up! Hey, we heard the shooting. Is everything okay? What was that? Did you see that? It looked like a little kid. Man, good job today. Me, son, is no more. Too bad there isn't a single filthy carrier magic to tell about it. <laughs> Omar, sir, you've done well tonight. You've definitely proven yourself. Let me personally welcome you to the Burma Army. You will never be one of us, Ken. Not quite, sir. A child escaped into the jungle not more than a few moments ago. What? How? Omar! Is this true? He's just a child, sir. Not more than five years old. He will never make it to the night. I will say who and who will not make it through the night. Not anyone else! Especially Karen Phil, like you. You've definitely proven yourself, maggot. <laughs> You've proven yourself a dead man. <laughs> a dead Karen is a better Burma, bitch. <laughs> Five years old, he said. Won't survive the night. <laughs> Come on, let's set up camp. We move tomorrow morning. Sir! Okay, people. We're here. I need medical teams A, B, and C to set up immediately for emergency assistance. Hey. Provisional teams A through E. Get the food supply train up and running now. So humanitarian teams X, Y, and Z, I need you to get all of your equipment and set up in the eastmost quadrant. Communications, logistics, come with me and bring all of your equipment, surveying equipment. And I need you to bring all of your village evacuation plot points. Thank you. Where's my cloth squad? Let's go. Get your gear sized out and ready for distribution. We've got some rags to clothe. All right, and everyone else, get out there and get the villagers organized. Let's go, people. We have 10 minutes. Get moving. Let's go. Thank you. This, this is what we were meant to do. Everything that we had experienced led us to this point right now. It has been years since they killed my family. And now we are free Burma Rangers. No longer running from and hiding. But are running to villages and ensuring the survival of our people. We fight not for today. For one day, one day, Burma will be without conflict. One day, our countrymen will exchange embraces. Not gunfire. One day, there will be a generation of children who learn of genocide not from newspapers and televisions but from grandparents in history books. One day, the word war will be as uncommon to man's collective understanding as the word peace is today. One day, the atrocities suffered by this world will be an afterthought in the global consciousness 